guys, sorry I've been MIA. I've been busy doing, I don't know, but I've had like so many video ideas, but then I don't write them down. So like my mind is just, where'd it go? I don't understand. So I don't like when people blabber on and on and on before they actually start the video. So uh, I'm gonna be talking about uh, what beginners should know before they get a snake. Uh, so let's get this started. So I would recommend you having your setup uh, ready before you bring your snake home for a lot of different reasons. You wanna make sure that the setup has proper bedding, the proper humidity, proper temperature, and the proper size for your snake. And it also depends on um, what life stage it is at. You're also going to want to have a water bowl that your all of your snake can fit into. You're also going to want to get a thermometer and something to check the percentage of the humidity. And I would highly, highly, highly recommend a temperature control. And I can link below which one I use personally. There are, um, depending on where you live, there can either be a lot or a little bit places to get your snake. And so it all comes down to what you want. Because sometimes you can get your snake uh, mailed in and shipped to you. But I personally would be very uncomfortable with that because the snake may be hurt or injured or it may even die in the process of it being shipped so I would personally really not want to do that um, to get a snake to me I would really recommend not going to like large pet stores such as PetSmart and Petco to get your snake. Their setups for snakes are really not proper. Their um, temperature and humidity are almost always off every time I go. Of course it depends on the store. A lot of the time they actually get their snakes from basically the reptile version of a puppy mill. So a snake mill? Another thing is don't get snakes from the environment. Um, this is very important because snake has been exposed to the environment and so it has its own behavior in it and it never grew up with humans, at least most likely, and so because it doesn't have that experience with humans, it's more likely to be hostile and also not really want to eat mice because they don't eat mice in the wild most of the time, at least not the ones you probably find around your house. They would be finicky eaters. They wouldn't be good for handling. Uh, they could also bring in diseases and bacteria into your home and so there, there's also the environmental aspect of bringing a snake into your home it's just overall a bad thing and i don't recommend ever doing that even for any other animal like i brought ash out just for this video um she's a western hog no snake anyway so the type of snake that you're going to want and you're going to get is dependent on numerous things so what you should consider for what type of snake you want is the size, the approximate size of the adult stage of its life because um, sometimes people get a smaller snake and they think it's going to stay that size and sometimes they do depending on the breed and then other times they can get a lot bigger than people anticipated and you need to be able to be ready and understand if they do get bigger than you thought that they would. Depending on the breed, you may need to get a rat or a mouse because they do get bigger. You should also think about the finickiness about it because some snakes can be really finicky like the ball python and the western hognose snake. They can be very picky eaters and they have to be in very certain moods otherwise they aren't going to eat. They can go months without eating and uh, it's not a really fun experience to have but you should be prepared for that to happen. So if you're going to get a notoriously uh, finicky snake then you should be prepared to either feed live or frozen or even pretend the frozen is a live thing by shaking it around. Uh, remember to always respect your snake's boundaries and if it feels stressed out then to stop attempting to feed it immediately and put it away for the rest of the day because you don't want your snake to associate feeding with bad behavior. And you should also keep in mind the expense of the setup in which some snakes require a lot more decorations than others. For example, western hognose snakes 
are burrowers, so they mainly need more bedding rather than decorations. I have four decorations in there, and so for some, it's important for them to hide. For western hognose snakes, they mainly are digging and underneath their bedding anyway. They don't need nearly as many decorations. Uh, meanwhile, some snakes are climbers, so they like to be on top of branches or decorations. They need more decorations, it can be more expensive. Keep in mind is how they are handled and how their notorious behavior is for handling. For example, a ball python can get very nervous. A western hognose snake can also get very nervous. Corn snakes tend to be very nice. They're very good beginner snakes. I've never personally had one. But from my research and also from experience from other people, they are very good beginner snakes because they're smaller and easy to handle. Uh, this part is really important and something that a lot of people may not do, um, but you always want to make sure that you get it from a reputable breeder that also understands what the snake needs. So some really important questions is to ask if the snake is fed live or frozen mice or if they have a different diet that they give and you should also ask the temperature and the humidity levels of what they keep the snake in if the gallon size of what the snake is kept in if the breeder is unable to provide that information to you then I would highly recommend not getting your snake from them because they may not know what they're doing in fact almost like nine out of ten times they don't know what they're doing because they should be able to give you that information Whenever you're examining a snake that you may possibly want to get, you should always, always, always check the health of the snake, whether this means if the eyes are cloudy and the rest of their body isn't, whether if their scales are out of place, whether or not their spine is protruding, whether scales are misplaced underneath the snake. Always note if there are any deformities. If there are any deformities, any issues with the snake, do not get that snake. Do not do it, you're, especially if you're a beginner. So don't get it if it looks sick. Don't get it if you have some bad feelings about the snake and you feel like something is wrong with the snake, Don't just don't do it. So where can you get mice? Um, mice can come from a local pet store, preferably a locally owned pet store rather than PetSmart or Petco, but if you do get them from PetSmart, um, just know that the mice that they provide has had issues with salmonella in the past, which is the brand Arctic Mice, I believe is what it's called. And so I personally wouldn't recommend them. The only reason I would buy mice from them is if I need emergency mice and my snake hasn't eaten in a while because I'm out of mice or something happened to the mice. So I really wouldn't recommend getting them from large pet store chains. You can order mice online. There are a number of places that you can get it shipped to you, but also really make sure to check reviews online to see if anything has happened to other people. And also consider the shipping cost because shipping can get very expensive, especially due to frozen mice and they have to put dry ice in the box. So your mice may also be sitting there for a while. The size of the mouse should be around the size of their circumference of a snake. It can either be the circumference of their head or it can be smaller. Uh, if you get a pack of mice at a time, I would highly recommend feeding the smaller mice first and then the bigger size if there are size variations in your bag. You can also look for people who locally have mice and always make sure that they are specifically feeder mice. All right, this is a very, very important part and that would be research. You really need to research your snake to understand its needs and to understand its temperature, the humidity it needs, their temperance, what kind of diet they have, and what kind of bedding they need. Always try to check several websites because there are some sites that are not really reputable and some websites that give you just plain wrong information. And then even so, always make sure to know if your snake is comfortable with the temperature and humidity. You can check if they're comfortable with it as like with their behavior whenever they're being handled or if they continue staying on one side of the tank. Uh, if they're doing that, then it may be too hot 
inside the tank so you may want to turn the temperature down also additionally listen to the breeder because if a snake is used to a certain temperature and you change that temperature dramatically it can cause problems for your snake always be sure to ask your breeder things about your snake all right guys so i'm sorry i'll try to post more often but thank you so much for watching um if you have any more questions feel free to comment below and I can respond or you can ask the Google. Always be sure to do your research, listen to your snake, and I I hope, I hope your new snake and you get along quite well. I hope this has been informational. Bye guys.